Hello everyone and welcome. Today, I want to talk about something fascinating that I only discovered recently, an electric motor design called an axial flux motor. Maybe many of you have known about this technology for a while, but for me, this was completely new. And once I learned about it, I couldn't help digging deeper. The more I learned, the more I realized how impressive and promising this design truly is. It genuinely feels like one of those breakthroughs that could reshape the future of electric vehicles, including highly efficient vehicles like the Aptera. There are two companies in particular, Magnax and Yasa, that are producing what they call yokeless axial flux motors. To understand why these motors are so interesting, it helps to first think about how most traditional electric motors are built. In the typical electric motor we're familiar with, there's a stator and a core, and the magnetic flux travels outward in a radial direction, from the center moving outward toward the stator. This radial flow is what gives the radial flux motor its name. But the axial flux motor works differently. Instead of having the stator wrapped around the rotor, the stator is placed between the magnets, almost like it's being sandwiched. The magnetic flux doesn't travel outward, it travels along the same plane as the motor's axis. This shift in design changes how the entire motor behaves, and when you remove the yoke in what's called a yokeless axial flux motor, the weight drops significantly, allowing the motor to become lighter, more compact, and even more efficient. When you compare axial flux motors to some of the best radial flux motors today, the difference is almost shocking. For example, look at the Tesla Model 3's motor, widely considered one of the most efficient radial flux motors on the market. That motor weighs around 46 kilograms and delivers a peak power of about 238 kilowatts. Meanwhile, a comparable yokeless axial flux motor weighs under 25 kilograms, almost half the weight, while delivering a peak power close to 400 kilowatts. The power density ends up being about four times higher that's an enormous leap, not a small incremental improvement. Beyond power and weight, axial flux motors also use significantly fewer materials. They need about 74% less copper, 50% less iron, and around 26% fewer permanent magnets. When you consider how valuable and expensive these materials are, especially rare earth magnets, this reduction is a big advantage. It means lower manufacturing costs, simpler sourcing, and potentially more sustainable production. Magnax created a spin-off company called Traxial, and they're claiming some extremely impressive performance numbers. They estimate that their motors achieve around three times the power density of standard motors, and they even suggest that vehicles could gain up to 20% more driving range because of the improved efficiency. They state that their electric... Hello everyone and welcome. Today, I want to talk about something fascinating that I only discovered recently an electric motor design called an axial flux motor. Maybe many of you have known about this technology for a while, but for me, this was completely new. And once I learned about it, I couldn't help digging deeper. The more I learned, the more I realized how impressive and promising this design truly is. It genuinely feels like one of those breakthroughs that could reshape the future of electric vehicles, including highly efficient vehicles like the Aptera. There are two companies in particular, Magnax and Yasa, that are producing what they call yokeless axial flux motors. To understand why these motors are so interesting, it helps to first think about how most traditional electric motors are built. In the typical electric motor we're familiar with, there's a stator and a core, and the magnetic flux travels outward in a radial direction, from the center moving outward toward the stator. This radial flow is what gives the radial flux motor its name, but the axial flux motor works differently. Instead of having the stator wrapped around the rotor, the stator is placed between the magnets, almost like it's being sandwiched. The magnetic flux doesn't travel outward, it travels along the same plane as the motor's axis. This shift in design changes how the entire motor behaves, and when you remove the yoke in what's called a yokeless axial flux motor, the weight drops significantly, allowing the motor to become lighter, more compact, and even more efficient. When you compare axial flux motors to some of the best radial flux motors today, the difference is almost shocking. 
For example, look at the Tesla Model 3's motor, widely considered one of the most efficient radial flux motors on the markets. That motor weighs around 46 kilograms and delivers a peak power of about 238 kilowatts. Meanwhile, a comparable yokeless axial flux motor weighs under 25 kilograms, almost half the weight, while delivering a peak power close to 400 kilowatts. The power density ends up being about four times higher. That's an enormous leap, not a small incremental improvement. Beyond power and weight, axial flux motors also use significantly fewer materials. They need about 74% less copper, 50% less iron, and around 26% fewer permanent magnets. When you consider how valuable and expensive these materials are, especially rare earth magnets, this reduction is a big advantage. It means lower manufacturing costs, simpler sourcing, and potentially more sustainable production. Magnax created a spin-off company called Traxial, and they're claiming some extremely impressive performance numbers. They estimate that their motors achieve around three times the power density of standard motors, and they even suggest that vehicles could gain up to 20% more driving range because of the improved efficiency. They state that their electric motor efficiencies are around 96%, while most radial flux motors usually land below 90%. That difference may not sound huge at first, but in the world of electric vehicles, single-digit improvements can translate into significant real-world range gains. Yasa, another company working with Axial Flux Design, provides more conservative numbers. They claim about a 30% improvement in power density and around a 5% increase in driving range. Either way, the technology seems to be offering improvements that could genuinely matter for future electric vehicle design. Now, imagine applying this technology to something like hub motors. Right now, hub motors aren't extremely common, but many believe they will become more dominant in the future because of their inherent efficiency. One of the biggest concerns with hub motors, though, is the unsprung weight. The Aptera's planned hub motor, the Alaf M700, weighs around 23 kilograms per wheel. That's not terrible, but it's still a significant amount of weight attached directly to the wheel instead of the suspension. Now imagine if an axial flux version of this hub motor existed, lighter by a factor of three, weighing maybe only eight kilograms while providing even more power. That reduction alone would dramatically improve handling because unsprung weight affects how the wheel responds to bumps and road imperfections. And beyond vehicle dynamics, imagine the range improvement. A 10 to 20% increase in range would be huge. On a vehicle already designed to achieve 1,000 miles, that could add an additional 100 to 200 miles of range simply by using a more efficient motor design. That's extraordinary. The exciting part is that axial flux technology is still in its early stages. No one is mass producing axial flux hub motors yet. Companies are developing prototypes, refining designs, and preparing for future manufacturing, but wide commercial adoption is still a few years away. My guess is that we won't see axial flux hub motors available for production vehicles for maybe three, four, or five years, but the development happening today suggests that this technology is absolutely moving in that direction. Some articles, including one from Charged EVs, have even suggested that axial flux motors could eventually replace radial flux motors as the dominant motor architecture. And when you combine axial flux design with the hub motor concept, eliminating the drivetrain, reducing frictional losses, shrinking the motor size, and cutting the material usage, the result could be the lightest, most efficient drive system available for electric vehicles. Thinking about the future Aptera, or even future the updates to other EVs, it's exciting to imagine gamma. what the next generation might look like once axial flux hub motors become practical and widely available. The potential improvements in efficiency and range could push electric vehicles into a new era where long-distance travel becomes easier, cheaper, and more energy efficient than ever before. If you've looked into axial flux motors before or have any knowledge about them, feel free to share what you know. This is one of those technologies that seems simple on the surface, but grows more fascinating the deeper you explore it. Thanks for listening, and I'm eager to see how quickly this technology evolves in the coming years.